As I said before, release 17, it is the first release with NTN uh, -end integration to mobile networks, and mainly they focused on uh, geostationary and low Earth orbits. Main focus here is fixed broadband and IoT services, but let's start with the terminology. Let's talk about geostationary, non-geostationary orbits. Let's talk about geo first. Uh, we can also call it geosynchronous equatorial orbit, which is basically a circular orbit with constant attitude. It means that satellite in the constant attitude from the Earth. What else we can say? Yes, there are of course some features for geo satellites. They have high footprint and that's the reason of low throughput for end users. They far from the Earth, which means they have uh, extreme large latencies. It is pretty hard to launch and high cost because again, move satellite to that position, it is not an easy task. But uh, the positive thing that they have a permanent position, so no need um, UE, special techniques for rotation, UE antenna, mainly one direction use cases, yes, because only downlink use cases, mainly uh, possible for navigation, for meteorology, for example, GPS. This is a classical example of um, geostationary orbit service. Number of satellites for global coverage, just three, basically enough. And um, there is no need in handovers because uh, one satellite can offer large, large footprint. There is also medium Earth orbit. This is the satellites uh, who has orbit in between 2,000 and 35,000 kilometers attitude, something in between Geo and Leo. Well, what we can say about them? They also have high footprint and relatively low throughput. Yes, latency, it is a little bit lower than for Geo stationary satellites, but still very high. Still very high cost. They have non-fixed position, which is required for rotation techniques for UE antenna. And mainly, this is about cases navigation, meteorology. Even though we need a low number of satellites and handovers is not required, but uh, medium Earth orbit is not so popular for wideband services, for mobile services, for example. This is mainly about navigation, meteorology and that kind of thing. And now let's talk about low Earth orbit. A low Earth orbit, it is something between uh, 300 kilometers to uh, 2000 kilometers. It has features with pre pre uh, relatively low footprint just um, about that type of kilometers that reflects in high throughput abilities because of the distance between between satellite and the earth is not so high it allows to get services with relatively low latency it is easy to launch it is relatively easy to build large mega constellations of multiple satellites but uh, there is no fixed position. Satellites moving around the Earth with different constellations. And that's why you will need to adjust your antenna to point right to the satellite. Um, Bidirectional use cases are possible because, again, this is not so far from the Earth. And that's why high data rate or 5G NTN, uh, I mean 5G mobile broadband or IoT cases is also possible. So number of satellites, thousands of satellites, I would say, required for uh, really global coverage, for really good latency and uh, high data rate. But of course, uh, it also requires some mobility features and techniques, such as handovers, uh, to be able for a handover connection from one cell to another cell. And actually, low Earth orbit, this is not only about Starlink. Yes, this is also about, for example, first, first satellite was low Earth orbit, first international space station, first man in the other place, low Earth orbit. Hubble Space Telescope was also flying in the low Earth orbit. This is very 
popular orbit for different different use cases now let's uh, a little bit more talk about leo constellation what else interesting here uh, we can use a, a frequency reuse for beamforming techniques for developing multiple cells with multiple identifiers and it can actually gain capacity of the whole system Sat satellites are relatively low size about washing machine size they could be low cost for example one web company they said it requires about one million dollar per item so this is not huge huge cost for satellite yes just one million dollar for one satellite this is not a big deal for mega companies easy to produce for example if we again talk about one web their project they claimed that they can produce one satellite per day and um, they could have different for example fixed or steerable beams uh, related to earth surface and again it's important to highlight that one of the issue that leo satellites moves very quickly relatively to the ground this is not like uh, geostationary just set up receiver and that's all because coverage almost stable and doesn't change yes with leo satellites it is very pro probably that you need to use some special mechanical tracking systems to point uplink connection to the satellite yes and of course you need thousands of satellites because they have uh, narrow beams if you want to have a large capacity system